Senate Armed Services Committee is taking aim today at a new threat to the U.S. military, bogus Chinese parts. Chief Washington correspondent Peter Cook is standing by with the panel's top Republican, Senator John McCain. Peter? Betty, thanks very much. Joined here by Senator McCain, Armed Services Committee, with this hearing today into bogus uh, parts entering the defense system. First of all, how big a problem is this, and how much this blame do you put on China itself? I think it's a serious problem, and uh, our initial estimates are about 70 percent of these uh, very important components uh, come from China, and it's a real industry over there. It's interesting how it washes through four or five or three or four different uh, companies until it arrives back in our, in our aircraft, our defense, missile defenses, and others. Is U.S. national security undermined by this right now? Do we have planes at risk? Oh, sure. I mean, if you have a, a, a computer chip that's uh, way past its age uh, limits, it's been discarded and they've been cleaned up and then sold and ends up in one of our systems. You know, a great percentage of the cost of these systems is the sustainability, the cost of operation and maintenance. And so if you have a component, a key component of it that's going to break down much sooner than you would otherwise expect, then it obviously it affects readiness, it affects capabilities, it affects across the board. It's very, it's, this is a serious issue. And what is it you want the Chinese to do at this point? Because Stop. you and Senator Levin suggested yesterday demanding mandatory inspections of all Chinese electronics into the U.S. Is that even feasible? I don't think that's feasible, but I think that we could have the Chinese government stop this. They know where it comes from. We know the town even in China. I can't pronounce it. Shenzhen. <laughs> there you go. Thank you, Peter. And uh, But uh, uh, we know where it comes from and we know what goes through. I think you can stop it that way. I don't, I'm not sure you could ever uh, adequately inspect every single part that came into the United States from China. What about the responsibility of the U.S. contractors involved here? You've got three companies testifying in front of your committee yeah. today. To what extent are they dropping the ball by not spotting this themselves? I think they, they should be more vigilant, but the way that it happens is pretty interesting because it washes through three or four or more different companies, but also part of it is that our emphasis on providing DOD business to small business people, some of these people are really only conduits. They have a phone and a desk, and they make money as they pass through. That's got to be really tightened up on also. All right. Bigger picture defense spending right now. The Super Committee set to release, we think, by the 23rd, a plan to reduce mm -hmm. the deficit. But if they don't do it, we've got automatic defense cuts. We've got mm -hmm. automatic non-defense discretionary mm -hmm. cuts. You're prepared to stand in the way of those defense cuts. Tell me what you're going to do. Well, we would, uh, you know, as the actions of Congress cannot bind the actions of future Congresses. We found that out many times. So we would, Senator Graham and I and others are looking at a package of savings and efficiencies, but not nearly on the scale of what this would be. Look, the Secretary of Defense, every military leader, every observer realizes that these cuts were so, would be so draconian in measure that it would impair our national security. What about uh, right now the, the notion the markets would respond to that negatively? You will be undermining the very agreement reached uh, just a few months ago. I would think the, the market would react negatively if we, if, over time, if we thought the nation was being placed at risk uh, as well. And obviously that's, that's the first priority. And by the way, this whole issue of tax increases, Republicans are willing to have tax reductions, such as corporate tax and individual tax, eliminate the loopholes and have it be revenue neutral. But everybody knows that if you do that, if you make the tax code that long, that you will increase revenues over time. So this thing about our refusal to raise taxes, no, we don't want to raise taxes, but we are for simplification of the tax code. All right, Senator John McCain, appreciate it. The latest from here on Capitol Hill. More in the loop when we come back after this short break.